to the Ladies in Conversation. We are delighted and excited that you're here with us today. And or should I say, conversating with you, not just speaking with you, spiritually speaking, should I say. So we are going to be talking this evening, or should I say today, or whatever time it is, God's grace is sufficient, and it is sufficient 24-7. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the grace of God, and and then we're going to have our little short discussion and our little testimonies on how God graced us in situations, circumstances that we may have encountered. But I just want to tell a little story first about grace. What makes Christianity different from all other religions in the world? It says years ago that a very question was discussed at a conference. And some of the participants argued that Christianity is unique in teaching that God became man. But someone objected and said that other religions teach similar doctrines. Another one said, well, what about resurrection? No, it was argued, other faiths believed that the dead rise again. The discussion grew really heated. C.S. Lewis, a strong defender of the Christianity, came in late, sat down, and asked, well, what's the ruckus about? And when he learned that it was a debate about the uniqueness of Christianity, he immediately commented, Oh, that's easy. It's grace. Amen. It's grace. Amen. So grace is the foundation for our Christianity, for Christianity. It's, it's by grace that the lost are found. It's by grace God keeps us, sustains us, and preserves us. It's by grace that we are children of God. We're his yes. children. And we have that confidence to know that we are his children. And I want to remind you of the sufficiency of God's grace in every part of our lives. So I'm going to briefly and very quickly go over some of the areas that we're graced in. Because we are really graced for everything we face. So, moving right along, God's grace is sufficient and his power is made what? Perfect. Perfect in our weakness. His power is made perfect in brokenness, in weariness. The word of God clearly says where we are weak, he is our strength. That's the grace of God. That's the grace, the favor, the unmerited favor of God. We don't deserve any of it, but praise God. He loves us unconditionally, and he favors us, and he has grace for us. Remember when Paul begged God to take away his thorn, whatever it was, but God said, he said, my grace, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect. In weakness. And that's in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. So where you're weak, <laughs> that's going to be one of your greatest areas. Let go and let God empower you and instruct you and show you the way to go. What are you weak in? Oh, I can talk about a lot of things we're all weak in. But when we're weak, he said, I'm your strength. So we're going to depend on him to be our strength. So God's grace is sufficient. It means when we find ourselves in a place of temptation, or we tempted by something we we our old man wants to cater to a craving cave into, should I say? God's grace is sufficient to give us the grace to overcome, to give us the grace to 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 not cave into that area where we're being tempted. Maybe it's a grace for uh, something you trying to. Do on a diet. You don't want to eat certain things, but your flesh is saying, mm, I want that chocolate cake now. I've got to have it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, God can grace you, believe it or not, not to eat it. Mm -hmm. He certainly can. Yeah. Give you the wisdom, the direction, the insight, but you got to just receive the grace of God. Don't yeah. frustrate it. Right. Don't say I can't, but say I can do it through you, Christ, who will strengthen me. I don't know what the temptation, I can go real deep with temptations. They don't let me have to go there. So we can go there <laughs> with the temptations that we do go, go through. We do suffer. But I just wanted to use something very, you know, minute to show that he's in everything. He's in all of our ways. He, he says whatever we, we face, God said, I grace you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how about if you become really exhausted and you're tired, you've been working all day long, and you get to go home and still do stuff. I always say a woman's work is never done. She goes to work, she comes home, and she got children, she got a husband. That's another whole full-time job. And, you know, that's, a, you know, you got to cook, and you got to clean, you got to do this, you got to do that. Never ending. But God's grace is sufficient. God's grace. Because you, you got to tap into the grace of God. 
How about if you're just in a place where you're confused and you're uncertain, you don't really know which way to go in a situation or a decision that you have to make, and you're tossed to and fro and you just don't even know. Well, he'll let you know his grace is sufficient because he'll give you peace. He'll make that way clear for you. He'll give you wisdom and insight and direction. Oh my God, he just said, acknowledge me in all your ways and I'm going to work it in, work it up, work it out on your behalf simply because you're my child, not because you deserve it or you, I owe it to you. It's because you're my child and I love you and I have graced you. I have graced you sufficiently. God said his grace is sufficient. So there is no limitations or lack in any area, in any aspect of our lives, whether we're tempted, whether we're exhausted, whether we are going through a challenge in our lives where we have problems at our workplace, in our home, in the relationships, in our finances. Oh, my God, we are grace, the favor, the goodness of God. God says he's got things for us we don't even re can't even imagine. So even when maybe a person's getting on your last nerve, the last one you think you even had. You didn't even know you had a nerve to be even taking this, what, they, what they're what dishing out. But you say, oh, this is it. This is, my, this is it. They're getting on my... No. God says, I've graced you. Right. I've graced you. It means on, right. you don't have to be rude to them. His grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. It means when you find your blood boiling and you're tempted to lash out some unkind word, something yes. that you know that will just hurt or offend or because you're mad and you're upset and you're letting the devil use your mouth. But you stop, stop, stop and just say, okay, Lord, okay, Lord. Oh, Lord. All right, Lord, I thank you for your grace because I'm about to go there. I'm about to go there, but I know your grace is. And you know what? You do that. God just loves it because you're acknowledging him. Not only are you acknowledging him, but now you're out going to receive God's grace, God's grace. So you don't have to lash out. You don't have to say something you're going to regret later. You don't have to speak out of order, out of turn. You don't have to speak the devil's conversation or language. You begin to hear and discern and receive wisdom and peace in that situation. And then you rejoice and shout the victory because God did it again. So we don't want to control our own tongues. We don't want to allow harsh words to fly out of our mouths but only those words that are seasoned with his grace. Seasoned with his grace. So no matter what's going on in our lives, his grace is what? Sufficient. sufficient. His grace is sufficient. He will bring power for your weakness. His resources, resource, should I say, are available to meet you 24 seven, all day, every day. So are you in need of a sufficiency for grace, a financial need regarding relationship with someone? Grieving the loss of a loved one, maybe? Loneliness, fear, mental torture, physical, spiritual health matters? You are grace. Tap in and receive it. In Jesus' name. We will be right back. We are now going to a break and we will return. Join us every Tuesday at 5 p.m. for Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. We're going to be speaking on different topics because we know that Satan comes to steal, rob, and destroy. And the word comes to heal, deliver, free, bless, prosper, all these great and awesome, wonderful things that we should be experiencing and we should have now because we are seated in heavenly places. And when we begin to receive it by faith, and then we know that Satan's what? Satan's best? best. Just, Just not good, good enough. enough. Welcome back to Ladies in Conversation, Spiritually Speaking. And now we are going to talk about how God graced us in some situation or circumstance where we just needed the grace of God. Maybe somewhere where we were weak or we had a lack of limitations or a sickness or whatever it may be. But God graced us. So I want to know, Sonia, how did God grace you in a situation that you had experienced and you knew it was nothing but the grace of God that got you through it? Well... <sighs> The one particular um, time in my life that stands out is when I was when I got pregnant with Eric. Oh, okay. So I was 14 years old. Uh, I went to church. I was a born again believer. I didn't know any of that. But thinking back at that time, being a 14 year old a mother and a child still myself, God put a special grace on me to be able to raise my son. Um, I, I stayed in school. 
Um, I was able to uh, get a high school diploma. I actually, you know, held a full-time job and I went to college too. Mm -hmm. So I paid my way through college. And the whole time God was keeping me, helping me to do that because, you know, as I had the opportunity to um, allow somebody to actually adopt Eric, I chose not to do that. Right. You know, I was given that opportunity to, um, you know, still have a childhood life and, and do the things that a normal teenager would do. But I chose to raise my son because it's something I knew I did. And I thought I was responsible for doing that. So when I look back at that time and being a young child and going through all those emotions. Of so you were 14, 14. You raised your child by yourself? Yes. Well, I, would, I lived with my mother. Okay. But with circumstances, sometimes she would like kick me out. Oh, okay. So there are times where so I had to stay and him. in different oh, okay. homes and stuff. So oh. nothing was really stable. Oh, okay. There was no stability, you know, with me and, and my son. But I still raised him. Mm -hmm. I still went to school. You know, I, I had a job actually when I was in high school as well. And I just did it all. And he saw that in me. And that actually instilled something in my son of not giving up and not giving in, mm -hmm. you know, so I thank God for that. Even when I didn't really know him, he knew me and he knew what I needed. Mm -hmm. And I needed that grace, that grace that is sufficient, right. you know, so I'm grateful Carried for that. Carried you through it. Yes. And he's a minister today, right? My son is a minister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the, all the things that, you know, cause my mother wanted me to get an abortion and I decided not to. So all those things, God knew, you know, and he put something in my heart mm -hmm. to say, you know, I can do this for you. And, and I just heard voices and he spoke through people mm -hmm. to me to let me know that I can handle it. And I didn't think I could do that. But because of him, mm -hmm. I was able to get through teenage pregnancy mm -hmm. and see my son be the man of God he is today. Love God, be an awesome father, mm -hmm. an awesome husband because of the grace of God right. and his yeah. love that he had for right. us. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yes. Wow. That was so, 14 years old. 14 right? years old. 14 so, years old. so you were almost like sister and brother in some, in some <laughs> stages of age. Yes. Yeah. We literally grew together. together. Yeah. And then um, when I was saved, we both got saved together. We both got baptized together. Actually, mm -hmm. I was pregnant with Asia and we both got baptized the same Amen. day. So we walked our walk together in the Lord, we, you know, we grew together and it's all because of his grace. He kept us. We didn't even know what grace was. Mm. We just knew he, right. we knew that God was with us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cause God had, God had a plan and, and no matter what he works it for us and not against us, no matter what it looks like in the natural. Yes. But mm -hmm. because he works all things, not some things, but all things for the good of those who love him called to go into his purpose. He already knew he had purpose. He had called you. He had a purpose for you. And everything is falling in because his grace was like you said, even when you didn't know it. Yes. He was there for you. Yes. Now you know about his grace. Oh, yeah. It's like, hey, Grace. Oh, <laughs> yes. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. I call on it. I know grace. that's right. Don't frustrate your grace, your grace of God. <laughs> Just receive it and yes. be blessed by it because it's so awesome and so powerful and so great to see how the enemy wants to do one thing and the grace of God is there to, mm -hmm. to, to, to empower, to strengthen, to heal, to liberate, to deliver, to do all kinds of wonderful, awesome, powerful things yes. in our lives so he can get the glory mm -hmm. and we can just continue yes. to trust him in every area of our lives. Yes. You know, so that's awesome. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm sure that's an encouragement maybe to some young single mothers. Oh, yes. No matter what, yes. you just, you know, look to the Lord to help you and to guide you. Mm -hmm. And he's doing it, but to really look to him to even tap into it and don't frustrate the grace, but to receive it. Right. You know, that's yes. awesome. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, Sonia. You're Amen. welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby, how about yourself? Um, the biggest thing, I mean, God graces us for a lot of stuff, especially when we're going through our life. But um, the biggest thing that I would say is God graced me with compassion. Mm -hmm. Because there were so many people that hurt me throughout my life mm -hmm. that I got to where I had a hard heart and I didn't want anything to do with anybody. I didn't, I didn't want anybody to tell me anything. I was just hard. I went from this being very fearful, um, child, teenager, always fear, always scared of my life, to finally saying, I'm done. And it came from... Uh, my first husband who used to abuse me, this and that and the other. And I got to a point where I just started 
hating people. I stood yeah. not wanting to be around people or anything. And it wasn't until I started knowing God that I started understanding grace. And he started giving me the grace to see people for who they are, mm -hmm. not, not the way they were acting, but for their heart, for their heart, because it was hard for me to open up to people, to get close to people. Mm -hmm. And um, so he started softening my heart. And then I started saying, but I didn't understand, and I'd say, God, Help me to see people's hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, help me to see wow. their heart and not who they are. Mm -hmm. Because I was hurt for so long, for so many years, and it actually stopped me from letting other people who were real, mm -hmm. who were, you know, loving, coming to me, breaking down that wall. And he started giving me the grace and the compassion mm -hmm. to see people for who he's called them to be, wow. to see their heart. And when I started seeing their heart, I started seeing, well, that's a hurt person, too. Mm, yes. Oh, my gosh, that person was hurt. That person wasn't loved. That person went through tra trauma. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have been able to see any of that if God had not graced me with the compassion for other people right. because I had such a hard heart at one time, you mm -hmm. know, to open my heart. So you really saw an experience, should I say, what God did in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's why you were able to identify other people because you were seeing yourself in the past. And I didn't know that until God graced me to start seeing them See, in his, in his, his eyes, eyes. Hit their hearts, the way he looked in at God's them. God's lenses. Exactly. So lenses exactly. of God. Yeah, exactly. His I had see. one perception. Everybody True. was out there. Because that's what the enemy and wanted you to receive. Mm -hmm. But see, the grace of God, which is his uh, grace, is unmerited favor. You know, for his plan, his will right. to be accomplished through your life with the, the gifting of compassion and, right. and, and loving uh, the way Christ would love us, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, exactly. it's just amazing how God just uses us in the very area where we are weak. He says, I am your strength. Mm -hmm. And that's right. the very area Thanks. that you were, the enemy was trying to rob. Yes, he was, because he was trying to rob me of, of all the love and everything else, of being able to help other people through that, right. you know, that, that had that show up, that had that hatred for other people because they'd been hurt. And, and now, I mean, I'm, I'm a very compassionate person. Yes, people can do things, and I just look at them like, oh, my gosh, what they must be going through. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, so I see the other oh, side. Yeah. Oh, I see, always me. see the other side because I'm always, because my husband is, he's, Kind of hard. Says, he says, yeah, and he always says, <laughs> <laughs> help you out. He always, right says, he always says, why are you always nice to everybody? And I said, well, why not? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, don't you see? I said, no, it's what you don't see. Right. It's Amen. what you don't see. I said, there's something behind that. Wow. I used to be there. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Amazing. That's good. Well, that's, that's really good because uh, having that compassion, because Jesus was compassionate. Yeah. He walked with compassion on the earth, and that's why he's seen the hurt, the pain, and all those things that people went through. I would say that God graced me, not realizing, even knowing, that uh, as a, a mentor to women. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I never knew that, that that was a call of God upon my life. You know, I knew when I first started coming to the things of the Lord, the Lord did tell me that he was going to, he's raising me up to bring deliverance to his people. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I think what really helped out a lot, God graced me, because I traveled so many different places. I traveled about five or six different countries, uh, over th about 35 or 36 some parts of the states, you know, the states, and I've traveled quite a bit. So I got to kind of know people from all over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I always said traveling was one of the most educated things for me in learning about people all over mm -hmm. the world, because to me, people are all the same, all over the world, oh, wow. all the same. And you know, we may have different cultures and different ways of doing things, but basically God created us all the same. Yeah. He did create yeah. us all yeah. equal, and I saw that. Mm -hmm. But I began to get women, I remember this lady came to me one time, and she prophetically spoke into my life, and she said, women are going to come to you, and they're going to tell you things that they've never told anybody else. And I'm like, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever, because it wasn't happening at that time, but right. she said it, and I never forgot it. 
because God, again, was just, you know, letting me know. And, and, and when it started happening, then of course, that word came back up in my spirit that it was a confirmation right. that mm -hmm. God was moving wow. in this area mm -hmm. of my life to begin to really help women in, in knowing who they are in Christ. Amen. Knowing their strength. Yes. Knowing that we are, we, we are just like, man, we're not, we're, we're, we're uh, different, but we're equal. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're, we're not, not equal with them, but we're different but we're still equal gotcha. and that women don't have to be our weakness. And he says, you know, where the weakness that women have is, is, is a physical thing. It's not, it's not spiritually, right. it's not uh, mentally right. or emotionally. And you know how they say, well, women, you're too emotional. God made That's us right. emotional. Yeah. So it's just like we have to be, many of us have to be healed yes. in our emotions. That's right. True. You know, yes. because we've had so many things happen to us. As we, you know, growing up and not knowing the Lord, or even knowing the Lord and just not having knowledge of certain situations that we need to understand. So God began to really uh, have women come to me, and I just started a prayer group right at the house, just praying for people. Uh -huh. I was praying for people, and I was getting free. They was getting free. Everybody was getting free. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, I like this. Because yeah. I remember so you. many women would come, would you mentor me? And I'm like, mentor? What do I do? I don't even know what to do. But the Holy Spirit began to uh, start me off with the, just a prayer group, and I started with that, and then wound it up getting involved into uh -huh. a women's group ministry. And now we have women that, you know, constantly, you know, constantly call or they'll come to the meetings that I have right. on Tuesdays and mm -hmm. they you know, because there's, there's a lot of things that women need to understand and know again about who they are in Christ, their God given blessings, talents, giftings, and callings. And that it's, we're, we're not going to allow the enemy to say, I have to have a man. If we want what God has purposed for us yeah, as yeah, if you're yeah. single. And even if you're married, and God says you you submit as fit in the Lord. Yes. You yeah. learn how to submit in a manner that is God's grace is working for you. Yes. So, see, hey, I'm getting to preaching already. I know, but see, your grace with that, Pastor Mary. Yeah. You see mm -hmm. somebody, when a woman comes with you, trauma, trauma, God gives you that insight, yeah, and you so always good. speak right to that person of what they're, what's happening with yeah. them. Your grace for well, that. I'm, I'm a witness. <laughs> so You're a witness, I. okay? You yeah. are grace well, for that. One, one of the things that I know that I was, had gifted, was gifted in was the area of encouragement. God, mm -hmm. you know, allows me to encourage, lift up, build up. Yes. You know, and to exhort and to, to allow the person to know how special and precious they are. And, and uh, because I know I went through a lot of challenges, a lot of uh, problems, issues, you know, attacked three different times, raped three different times in my life as a young girl, as a young woman. And uh, I got here by rape. I was like for years not knowing why I felt so isolated, so lonely, so mm -hmm. fearful, so shame, yeah. full of guilt, full of anxiety, full of worry, and finally set getting set free. So mm -hmm. I just realized that there's so many other women that us uh, was I was functioning every day. I was going to work, doing right. a good job. People didn't know what was going on inside of me. People mm -hmm. didn't know I was hurt and wounded. People didn't know I was scarred. Mm -hmm. People didn't know right. I was, you know, fearful and, and None of these things I showed because when mm -hmm. I then when I drank, had a problem with alcohol, it was said, why was you crying? I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know <laughs> because I never related the, the 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 sexual attacks or the rape mm -hmm. to my attitude, my right. thoughts, and yes. and I thank God that even God graced me to work at a men's facility in a prison. Yeah. That amazed me when I yeah. read your bio, you with everything about your rapes and everything, and then you worked in a men's prison, and I thought, to my, and this is before I got to know who you were, I yeah. thought, how could she do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, God's that grace. was the grace yeah. upon you. Because, because he didn't that. want me to hate men. And to this day, I do not hate men. I see the value. I see mm -hmm. their worth. I love them because they have, a, they have a mission from God on how to, to, to run this earth but unfortunately, some don't do it, and many yeah. are doing it, thank God. But I, I see that. I used to preach at the men's prison where I worked at. Once they, they knew I was a Christian walking, they would have their church services. They'd say, would you come and preach for us tonight? I said, okay, not a problem. Even Pastor Gary and I went in together preaching at the men's yeah. facility. Wow. See, so, that is so much grace and favor yeah. there. I'm telling you, yeah. God graced you for all of that, and you give us hope. 
That's what brings a lot of women to you is because they see that strength. They see that love inside of you, Pastor Mary. You're a great mentor. Because there's nobody but the grace of God. Amen. I tell you, I Amen. Give it Believe me, yes. I was not the one. Yes. I, would, I, would, you know, I would be like, hands off, don't come too close. I ain't the one because I was getting, you know, after all going through all the challenges that I went through, I was beginning to get a heart and support. Mm. But God, you know, again, we we're, we're weak. So he brought the deliverance, he brought the freedom, yes. he brought the liberty. Yes. He began to show me how the enemy operates and the way he operates and how we're all mm -hmm. made equal in his eyes and how he created us for greatness mm -hmm. and how he created us and how he sent his son. You know, he began to show me these things. Mm -hmm. So I want everybody to know. I don't care whoever have ears to hear, let, let them, them hear. hear. Let <laughs> them receive what God has for them because yes. God can't be, he, 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 who can stop God? Nobody. No one. So when you got him, you got it all. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Thank so with that said, done. I'm going to end this because I can get to going a little bit more. <laughs> but I know that I know that I know that uh, I am excited because I do know that God's grace is sufficient. Yes. He is sufficient in all of our lives. He is no respecter of person. And he has great and wonderful plans for every single one of our lives. You just keep on acknowledging God, focus on him, praise him and thank him. And go about doing what you got to do throughout the day. Because yes. God will check, 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 check you if you're off balance or you're yes. off course and you're going the wrong way. Because he is in you, the greater one that yes. is in you. And he will check, check, check you. And he will get you back on the right track yes. every thank time. You, because it's the job of the Holy Spirit to glorify the name of Jesus through Amen. your life. And because he's going to glorify Jesus through your very life, all you got to do is just continue to know that you know that you know God's grace is sufficient. Amen. Amen. Amen.